Hey, what's going on guys? This is Matt and today we are brewing a pseudo Oktoberfest. If you're new here, make sure to like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel as I do a lot of grand glass videos. I do also want to take a second and thank my channel members. So thank you so much for becoming a channel member. Anyway, guys, we got this strike water heating up behind me. We're going to go ahead and jump into Beer Smith 3 to talk about the recipe and then we can go right into the brew deck. Next, we can jump into Beer Smith 3 to go over the Oktoberfest or Marzen recipe. This is a 4.2 gallon batch we're planning. For the malt bill, we just have four malts here. We're using Carapils for head retention, Melanoidin for mouth feel and aroma. And for the core of the build, we're using a half and half Pilsner and Munich 2. Munich 2 is the darker version of the Munich malts. For the hop additions, we're using Pearl, just 0.85 ounces, and this is just a bittering addition at 60 minutes. And for the yeast, we're using Lutra Quike from Omega. I really like using Lutra for pseudo lagers as it does a good job at emulating what a lager will taste like, and you can do this in a fraction of the amount of time. Obviously, this is a traditional Oktoberfest where it's going to be sitting lagering for a few months. Uh, this is simply just going to be fermented at 90 degrees for a handful of days. Next, we can go into the starter information. So for the starter, the Omega pack comes with 144 billion cells and it's recommending 174 billion cells. So we should have done a starter here, but we opted not to. And then for the water chemistry, it's relatively balanced, uh, but it's a little bit of a lean towards the sulfate side, which is going to promote a more drier finish. Next, we can go ahead and jump into the brew day. First, we double milled our grains to a fine crush. Next, we adjusted our water chemistry by adding 1.9 grams of baking soda, 1.3 grams of Epsom salt, 0.9 grams of chalk, 0.7 grams of calcium chloride and 5 milliliters of lactic acid. After our water was adjusted, we mashed in. Once we mashed in, we stir the mash to break up any dough balls. We take a pH reading at 15 minutes into the mash and measure 5.3, which was on target. After a 60 minute mash and a 10 minute mash out, we raise the grain basket up and sparge with one gallon of room temperature water. Once we collect our boil volume, we take a gravity reading and we got far below the target. We will have to add some DME later to adjust. Once we hit a boil, we add 0.85 ounces of pearl. At 15 minutes remaining, we add some Irish moss and around two grams of Y yeast yeast nutrient. We also add around one pound of DME to adjust for our missed gravity. At 10 minutes left, we run boiling wort through the pumps, line, and chiller to sanitize the equipment. Once the boil is completed, we turn on the cold water to the plate chiller to rapidly chill the wort to 90 degrees. Next, we rack the beer over to the fermenter and aerate with a drill stir stick attachment. Lastly, we add Lutra Quike from Omega Yeast. We take an original gravity reading and we measure out at target at 1059. We set the fermentation chamber to hold 90 degrees for a few days. After fermentation, we rack the beer over to a keg using a low oxygen transfer method. We take a final gravity reading and it measures out to around 1014 or ABV is 5.9%. So here we are at the end of the brew day where we can talk about the beer. So this is the Oktoberfest, the Marzen. It's only been on tap for probably around four or five days now. I've really been enjoying it and sharing it with friends. I've never actually brewed a Marzen or an Oktoberfest before, and this isn't really the proper way to do it. Uh, you're supposed to let these lager for quite a few months leading up to uh, like September, October timeframe. Uh, but we kind of did a pseudo variant of this using Lutra Quike yeast from Omega. Um, so we actually ended up leaving this in the fermenter for probably about four days. 
Fermentation pretty much finished up in about one and a half to two days, but I wanted to give it another two days really just to clear out, to let a lot of the sediment and the yeast drop out so you'd have less cold crashing sediment in the keg. Um, so this is pretty much the beer right here. Uh, I do want to do this again, but actually I want to use lager yeast and you do a pressure fermenting variant of this. The last thing I want to talk about regarding brew day notes, and then we can go ahead and jump into tasting notes, is that I was definitely under my gravity. I can't remember the actual point percentage. I want to say it was like around 9 or 10 points though, so it was a significant amount of points to be off by. I want to say that probably has something to do with using half Munich malt. I don't know if it's a Beersmith 3 problem, but whenever I seem to use Munich malt, it does have a low diastatic power. It doesn't do a very good job converting those starches into sugars. I'm guessing that's probably why I was under by so much. Uh, but we did self-correct this with around a pound of DME. But overall, it was a pretty smooth brew day besides missing my pre-boil gravity. So to wrap this video up, we can go into tasting, the tasting section of the video, which is appearance, aroma, mouthfeel, and flavor. We can go through each of them with the beer and I can kind of talk about what I think of the beer overall and changes I would make. Um, so first of all, we can go into appearance. Um, so I don't know if you can tell, probably not because the light's coming this direction, but it is a, it does have, it is a pretty much like a dark orange color. Um, and it is relatively clear. It's not super clear. We didn't use any cold side findings with this. We did cold crash this in the keg, obviously. We did use Warflock as well in the brew day, which you probably picked up, but we didn't use any gelatin or biofine or anything like that in the keg. Uh, but I'd say for actually being about maybe a week old at this point, uh, it's actually relatively clear for it being only a week old. As far as the head's concerned, it's definitely like an off-white color as well. Next, we can go ahead and go into aroma. So for aroma, there isn't like a ton going on with the aroma. Uh, you definitely pick up on like a sweet, malty aroma. Uh, maybe almost like a very, uh, like a light caramel aroma, but it's really subtle with the caramel note. You do get a slight toasty note as well in the aroma. And I would say for hop character, there really isn't a whole lot of hop character coming through with this aroma as well, but that's really not too surprising. We didn't do any late boil additions and we didn't also do any dry hopping with this. Um, so it's really subtle on the hop aroma. Next, we can go into mouthfeel. So for mouthfeel, I would say it's probably medium light on the mouthfeel. And lastly, we can go into flavor. So for flavor, you do immediately get confronted with this like malty sweetness with it, but it does finish on the drier side. I would say the bitterness is probably like light to moderate. Besides that, I mean, there isn't a whole lot of flavor. I mean, besides just like an initial like malty sweetness, malty flavor, and then it finishing a little dry and a little bit of bitterness. But besides that, it's really not that complex. Anyway, guys, that really about wraps up the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel for more Grain of Glass content like this. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.